what was the first company Elon Musk started? Elon Musk's first company was Zip2 Corporation, which he co-founded with his brother, Kimball Musk, in 1996. Zip2 was a software company that provided business directories and maps for newspapers. Hi everyone, in today's video, we're gonna build a chatbot that can take voice or speech as an input and give us, you know, output in both text and audio format, just what you just, uh, you know, you saw now. So if you could remember uh, in the previous video, we explored, uh, you know, two capabilities of the open AI. One of them was actually text to speech. You can take a text like your blog or article or anything and convert that into the audio or speech. The other capabilities are speech to text. You can take audio just like what I'm talking now and convert that audio or speech into the text. And we went into the detail and saw this thing, right? So you can go and explore that thing. Uh, we also have the notebook attached, you know, and available on the github so you can go and check that thing so in today's video we actually going to use this uh, both of these you know capabilities and build an actual chatbot which is capable of doing this thing right so this is an streamlit application that we are you know we're gonna see how we can build that particular application right so i would suggest go and watch this video even in this particular video i'm just going to explain the uh, whatever the necessary code but i would suggest if you want to understand in detail go and watch that you know particular video so let's get into the code so here is the code associated with you know uh, the chatbot that you just saw which is currently running on the local host which is the stream lead, you know chatbot so let's see what we have definitely the first thing you know uh, we are importing some utilities that we will check later no need to worry about uh, you know that thing I think we don't need this thing we just need I think import stream lead as SD right yeah uh, we just require that thing, right so let's see what we are requiring uh, so the first thing we are uh, importing a library called audio recorder streamlit so the one thing what you just saw here you can see we have the some recorder here this recorder actually came from uh, that particular library and we will see you know how to initialize that particular recorder then we have streamlit float which is again some utility that we are you know or library we are installing for this recorder purpose so what happened when the conversation become longer when you scroll your page this uh, mic might go up and down so to just make sure it float and fix at this one particular position we require that particular library and it's a simple to use to make sure even the conversation become long this will be still here and you can click and talk about uh, you know talk to it right and that's what that actually the float we are just initializing this particular thing called float in it right now let's get into the actual code so whenever this application started, right, you know that we could see that, you know, this is an, a chat bot and you could see this is the message from the bot and this is the message from the user. And again, this is the message from the bot, right? So chat bot has this sequence of messages. Each of the message has some content that you just see here. And to indicate whether this message is from the bot, which is actually the assistant, and the other one is a user. So we have some role associated with that particular, you know. So if you are familiar with the typical, you know, chat GPT kind of uh, API, you know, there is a messages array. So when we uh, initialize this particular application, what we check, we check, does there any already some conversation happening? If that conversation is happening, we usually store this messages inside the session variable so that it is accessible across the, uh, you know, application. So we check here, do we already have a messages array inside our session variable, which is the streamlit session state. If it is not there, we want to initialize it. So if it is not there, we simply initialize this message array with single message, which is actually the assistant first uh, message, right? And you could see there is a content associated with that message and there is a role so that we know that it is actually from the assistant. And that's what you see here. Hi. How may I assist you today, right? That is the first message you uh, saw when we actually started the application and we are calling that function. So basically we are initializing our chat here, right? That messaging array. Next thing is simply the title, what you see here. We see this open AI conversational title, what we have, right? And now let's talk about this audio recorder. So what we did actually, so in this footer area, we created one streamlit container 
So container is something which can hold some other, uh, you know, streamlit uh, item into it. So let's call it as a footer container. And inside this footer container, we are actually initializing our audio recorder, which we imported here. So from that uh, library, we imported the audio recorder. And this is the only single line where you simply initialize this particular audio recorder, right? That is what the initialization inside the footer. And once you do that thing, you see actually this particular icon coming here. Now you have initialized message, now you have initialized recorder, but uh, here we only initialize that particular message, but we didn't display actually the message, right? So we initialize, it became part of the streamlit session variable, but it will not come here unless and until we actually display that message. So here in this particular line, you know, we trade through all the messages we have inside our session variable, and then we create the streamlit chat message. The message, what you see is called a streamlit chat component or let's say a chat element what they have it and we simply indicate the role of so that it knows whether it is coming from the bot or not right so we say that you know streamlit chat message give the role of that particular message and we simply write the content of that message so this will write this particular sentence hi how may i assist you this is how you write a particular message uh, initially right now what happens this is all all initial setup you got some initial message from the bot but when user starts interacting with the bot, so whenever I click here and then I start talking, this audio recorder will start receiving those audio bytes or whatever the, these things, right? So we have this condition here. If there are some audio bytes coming through this recorder, then now we need to do something. So once we get this audio bytes, this is nothing but the speech. Now we want to use here our first open AI service. So what we want to do, we want to transcribe our voice into the text because we know the chat gpt endpoint that we're going to use is actually accept the text right so what we do here we need to transcribe uh, this particular uh, file and if you look at our code of the previous tutorial that we're going to see in the current tutorial also so whenever we have a you know speech to text we want to do basically we call the transcriptions endpoint of the open ai and when we call the transcription endpoint, we pass a model that we want to use to transcribe response format, whether we want response in a plain text or let's say JSON and we read a file that we want to try. So this is actually the audio file. So let's create first that audio file so that we can send that audio file to the transcription endpoint, right? So what we do here, first of all, we declare one file name and we simply open that file and write our audio bytes that we just read from the audio recorder. Now we got the file, we call the speech to text function, which is actually internally calling the same function what we just saw. So if you look at the speech to text function, what it is doing, it is simply taking our audio file, right? And uh, it is attaching that file as a file element and we are calling the transcriptions endpoint and we get the transcript. Now this transcript is nothing but what you just saw on the UI, which is actually this thing. What was the first company Elon Musk started because when I, uh, as the question I asked this thing in a speech or voice and then finally we got the transcription. So that's why I told you, if you watch the earlier video, uh, you are clear how to use this, but this is also pretty easy. Uh, you know, we simply, uh, we need to know what endpoint we need to call. We need to know how to pass our file or the input and some other configuration like the model name and the text format, right? So let's go back to our app. We don't want to lose the track. So finally we converted our speech into the transcript, a text that can be sent to now chat GPT, right? So once we got this particular text, we check if that text exists, we need to update our messages array because now we got some response from the user. So we append one more, you know, message inside our message array. And then we mentioned that this is the role user because this is coming from the user and the content will be whatever the transcription we got. So this transcript. So we appended our session variable. Now we also want to display on the UI so that we can see this message, which we just saw here, right? So once we append it to the session variable, we simply display this particular message, right? And now once we have already transcribed our, uh, you know, audio, we don't require that audio file extra memory it will consume, right? So we simply remove that particular file. So this was the whole part where we take the user input, we converted it into, into the text or so basically we use speech to text. We also updated our session variable and we also updated our UI by displaying that message. Next thing we know now, we need a reply from the GPT because we need to reply the user whatever the query it is asking, right? So we have this section of the code. What this section of the code is doing, it checks 
does our last message is coming from user or it is coming from assistant so if the last message is not from the assistant means it came from the user and we need to create the response for it so it checks if it is not from the assistant we need to now call the gpt to get the answer for that particular uh, you know query so here what happening you know uh, we initiate the chat message that is coming from let's say assistant and what we do we call our gpt this is a typical chat gpt completion endpoint to get the answer so we pass our messages array which nothing has all the conversation we have for our thing because you know that whenever we make a gpt call we need to whenever we call our completion endpoint we can specify the model like 3.5 or gpt4 and the messages array which we have already uh, collected right but here we display only the user message and the uh, sorry assistant message and the user message but we can also have a system message which actually indicate the behavior of your bot or the character of your bot right so before actually sending that request what we do we also have one more message called system message which says that you know you are an helpful ai chatbot that answers question asked by the user now here you could put anything maybe your chatbot is doing specific thing it's a math tutor or it is a something you know uh, you can put all that information here so we simply take earlier system message what we have and we take the conversation that we have and then we pass that whole big message to the chat gpt this is a if you have watched our earlier videos we know that this is a typical chat completion endpoint that will generate answer and then finally we will get the response here and let's go back to our app if this executes successfully we're going to get the response from the chat gpt which is the answer what you see here this is the answer we got chat gpt but we don't want just this text based output we want an audio so that we can hear so that user can hear it as an audio right to do that thing what we do actually first convert that text into the audio and this is where we use the text to speech the other capabilities of the uh, you know open ai api so text to speech what happened again in the previous call when we did speech to text the input was audio but here input will be the text and the output will be the audio right so we call the again the client speech creation api which is like again we mentioned the model tts here tts means text to speech this tts means the text to speech model and then there are different voice uh, i think there are six voice that we saw in this particular uh, you know you know uh, we saw that there are actually the six voice when you call it yeah you can see there are six voice that you can try so i just choose one of them and i pass simply our input text which is nothing but the output generated by the chat gpt response right and when, and in the response we need to write that uh, whatever the chat gpt response now to as an audio file so this is typically when we hit the speech create endpoint we can get the response and we can write that response to a file using this stream to file functions eventually we got a file which has the audio file corresponding to the text output that gpt generated now once you got that audio file then it become a typical audio file that we need to play in any web application for that we are using this autoplay audio function so what it does actually first of all it reads uh, our file in a binary mode uh, it does base 64 encode and decode this is a typical thing you do when you want to you know actually um, play your audio on any web page and then we use this markdown syntax where we use this html tag audio autoplay and we give our source which is saying that uh, you know the source is actually data which is an audio mp3 and which is base 64 uh, whatever encoded uh, kind of a thing and eventually we display this you know markdown uh, and uh, this unsafe allow html is nothing but in this particular markdown we are allowing the html tags to be uh, you know return or have that kind of thing and eventually it will start playing that particular you know audio so this is how uh, which was uh, you know pretty easy to play that audio but again we want to make sure whatever the response we got from the ch chat gpt we we update our session variable right as an assistant message so that the conversation actually um, you know continues kind of a thing right so maybe um, you can play with it you can ask more questions for example let me see if i could ask more questions what is the recent company that Op uh, elon Musk associated Now it is actually, you know, uh, generating the audio response. So you could Elon see. Musk is associated with several recent companies, but one of the most well-known is SpaceX, 
which he founded in 2002 with the goal of reducing space transportation costs and enabling the colonization of Mars. SpaceX has made significant advancements in space technology and has become a major player in the aerospace industry. Okay, let's see if we could ask something recent, like, you know, does Elon Musk, uh, you know, owns Twitter? Now it is transcribing that, you know, speech to text. Now it is generating the GPT answer. Now it is actually generating the audio response. And eventually Elon Musk it... does not own Twitter. While he is a highly influential figure on the platform and has a large following, he is not the owner of the company. Twitter was founded by Jack Dorsey, Biz Stone, and Evan Williams in 2006 and is a publicly traded company. Elon Musk is known for his active presence on Twitter and has attracted attention for his tweets about various topics, including technology, business, and current events. Okay, so it might not have that updated information. So you can play with this particular, you know, yeah, this is what I was saying. If you see, I scroll this thing, but still my recorder remains here. If I didn't use this thing, if I didn't use this float command, what will happen? Uh, the, the moment I scroll it, that mic will go up and down or something like that, right? So it just stick or float at one position. That's what uh, we wanted, right? So I am going to share this, uh, you know, code with you uh, in the video description so that, you know, um, you can try. And if you have any suggestions, you know, you can uh, give me those suggestions in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, I would say please do subscribe. Thank you very much.